Hello and welcome to the Total Saints podcast. We are the weekly Saints podcast, your home for all things Southampton Football Club. This podcast is being live streamed on YouTube, Facebook, X and on Twitch. So good evening if you're watching along live. Our podcast is supported by our loyal Patreon community and without you, we couldn't make the show each week. So a huge thank you as always. Coming up on the podcast, we have our contender for Dallas game of the season, our first goal of straw yesterday at Blackburn. We're going to try and find something interesting to talk about for 15 minutes, so uh, wish us luck. And there are two home games this week, Inform Coventry, the visitors on Tuesday evening, and then Watford head south down the M3 on Saturday. Going to preview both of those games for you. My name is Martin Stark, and joining me this evening are Steve Grant, the owner of Saints Web, and Glenda LaCour, who is the writer of the blog League One Minus Ten. All underpinned by our TSP patrons, this is episode 272 of the Total Saints podcast. Now, we start as always with a big shout out to our Patreon community. As I mentioned, their monthly contributions support our show. There are four tiers ranging from £5 to £20 per month. And aside from supporting the podcast, each of the tiers has different perks. There's access to an ad free version of the podcast. You get exclusive TSP t shirts, there's the FPL, and you also get access to our TSP events. Now, we're currently busy finalizing the plans for our end of season live TSP. I can't say too much at the moment, but it involves TSP and a pretty decent pub. So hopefully we'll have more on that in the next couple of weeks. If you want to get involved in supporting TSP each month, just head over to patreon.com forward slash Total Saints podcast for more details. All the links are in the podcast show notes and on the YouTube description. So a goal destroyer, Ewood Park meant Saints failed to win for a third game in a row. Steve, you were there. Um, what was your take on the uh, the goal destroyer yesterday? Um, yeah, it wasn't a classic. Um, that's for sure. It's not not one that's going to live long in uh, in anybody's memory. I wouldn't have thought. Um, I mean, basically, the only positive to take out of it is a clean sheet, and even that was. I mean, even looking back at that game, it was kind of a given, really. Blackburn offered next to nothing really um a couple of little um sort of scuffed efforts on on the break and one um one half decent lob that was presented to him by us in the first half um yeah we just couldn't quite get going really um it was yeah a bit stodgy uh i don't think the wind helped but ultimately same for both same for both sides really but it was it was blowing a bit of a gale um but yeah we just we just looked looked like just a just a, a yard off the pace, really. Um, very frustrating, and yet we still created two or three presentable opportunities. Um, Aribo's hit the bar um, with a with a decent header where he's basically had to generate all the power himself. Um, Adam Armstrong's missed a chance that I think nine times out of ten you'd expect him to at least hit the target. Hmm. Um, and uh and yeah we've and then obviously walker peters what five minutes from the end or so um where yeah another one's kind of cleared off the line and they've scrambled it away um yeah frust- very frustrating and also again we've 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 we're kind of looking at this scenario where once again we're we're playing with a structure when um when we have an actual center forward on the pitch um, the rest of the time, it's it's all a little bit flaky, and it doesn't doesn't seem to quite be working as as planned. Um, so yeah, irritating, um, and you can you can kind of just tell by the um, I mean the the mood in in the away end was was certainly one of frustration, a little bit of that frustration boil, boiling over among some um, those with certainly those with um, shorter uh, patience than the. Than uh, many of the rest of us, but it, yeah, it's irritating one. But I don't think at the end of the day, if we'd, if we'd, ha- I think if we'd held on at Ipswich on Monday, then we we go into um, yesterday's game with a very different, very different attitude. But I don't know whether there's a sort of subconscious psychological thing of well, we're probably not going to get top two now, so let's um, so so it's kind of sloopy shoulders, and we're, we're going to feel sorry for ourselves a little bit. 
which is a little bit concerning. Uh, Colin, who is, is watching live, he says, let's not sugarcoat it. We were poor. Um, we're limping into the playoffs at this rate. Colin, if you've been watching for any length of time, you will know that one thing we will never do is sugarcoat anything. Uh, we're, we're guilty of many things on this podcast, but not sugarcoating anything. Um, Glenn, we didn't register a shot on target until the, the 80th minute. I mean, what no. on earth? It, it, it was just turgid. Uh, yeah, it was pretty much. Um you got to remember in this game, a point was a good result for Blackburn and it's probably what they wanted. You know, they probably need four or five draws to guarantee being in the championship next season. So, you know, a draw was what, what they wanted. Um, and it was up to us to be better than that. And of course, the, you know, and really, if you score the first goal, then then the whole thing changes. And the, the miss by... Adam Armstrong, which was actually what you know, one of the, I think it was about five minutes in, was it? Mm. It was one of the best moves that we came up with all game. It was a good cross fired over by Brooks. It's about the only thing he did as well. Mm. And um, to, to play an air shot there was um, was was a nightmare, especially when you know we've had so many games recently where we've been saying if only we took our chances, then these games would be out of sight. And that if that goes in, it's a completely different game. But Overall, I agree with Steve. We we put in a performance. Um, it was the performance of a team that knows that automatic promotion has gone, <laughs> and and there was there was an element of of going through the motions about it. Um, I think um, you know you listen to managers sometimes, and they yeah even before the Ipswich game, Russell Martin Russell Martin was going you know twenty four points to play for, and everyone else is like yeah all right mate yeah. <laughs> we're not getting twenty we're not getting twenty four points. Um, so even with sort of like immense positivity we're still not um you know i, I think that i think it hit everybody yesterday that it, it just it it wasn't going to happen um and ironically with the other results going the way they were if if we'd won yesterday i think a number of people would have been oh it's back on perhaps yeah but, yeah with ipswich and leeds both losing that wasn't yeah uh, we didn't see that coming it's surprising as leeds champions elect and all that um so so yeah, I mean it was it was it was a it was a flat horrible performance. Nothing really much to um you know to recommend it. I don't think anyone will be uh, remembering much about the game at all. Um yeah, we were unlucky with the Rebo's header. That was that was another that was the other decent move that we managed all game. And we had a little flurry when we we had what resembled a proper a proper front line in the second half. Mm. Um you know, once all the lightweight boys went off, it was uh, it was a little bit better. But uh, but yeah, I, I certainly wasn't expecting a goal. It was more hope than expectation towards the end, and uh, I think I'd more or less given it up as nil nil at half time. It it just was was generally poor. Um, but uh, yeah, I think both teams got what they wanted. You know, Blackburn got a point, and we chalked the game off, which which ultimately is um, is not going to mean much come the end of the season. I want to talk about, obviously, Jack Stevens. Glenn continues to be a big talking point among fans. Russell Martin saying yesterday, uh, I think the quote was, I hope that by the end of the season, he'll be appreciated for what he is instead of looking at him as a centre-half who isn't playing there. Um, Russell Martin's kind of come out and been quite defensive about Jack Stevens. Um, he's been questioned about it by the media, and, and rightly so. And, and obviously the fans continue to talk about it on the way to a game, on the way back from a game. And when the results aren't going the way they are at the moment, we're going to look back at that unbeaten run and, and the change that happened when he was trying to shoehorn Jack Stevens into the, the team. But it looks like he, he's here to stay for the rest of the season in, in that role. Yeah, I mean, it, it all started when when Flynn Downs got injured. And then we had the games where Russell Martin didn't bring Jack Stevens into the side to replace Flynn Downs, which he could have done. And what he did was he tried to play Will Smallbone as a six and brought Joe Rothwell into the team. And then we had that absolute nightmare against Hull where neither of them could receive the ball because they were both having terrible games. So, so basically, our whole ethos of playing out from the back was was gone. And from that moment on, Russell seemed to panic and say, right, I want this extra passing option in midfield. I know. We'll play Jack Stevens at fullback and he can get into those areas and, and receive the ball. That's all well and good. But there's there's a cost to, you know, to, to doing that. And the cost is basically not in well, yesterday, not playing with a left back. So I can kind of understand it, but the I thought yesterday in particular the, the cost outweighed the benefit because I thought it it definitely it 
completely sawed off Ryan Fraser because he was basically left one on one the whole time with Callum Britton, who mm. we took the mick out of this guy last week because he got the brainless sending off at St Mary's. But he played right back for Blackburn yesterday, and fair play to him. I thought he had an excellent game. Kept Ryan Fraser really quiet, and it just occurred to me that it's more difficult for Fraser because he hasn't got a left back or a natural left back behind him. He's got no one making decoy runs. He's got no one sort of like making overlapping runs to give him an option to pass to. Now, what usually happens is that Stuart Armstrong gets over there. But because he wasn't playing, it was probably down to Rothwell to do it. And it just it just didn't work. So I, I felt a bit sorry for Ryan Fraser. He just It just seemed to cause a problem um, not having a left back there. And also what it meant was that Blackburn didn't have to play another player over there. So they could afford to clog up the centre of midfield even more. So we might have had an extra player in there, but they did as well. And it, and it just it just seemed to me that it's it's a tactic that could have been useful if we'd implemented it straight away when Flynn Downs got injured. But now Flynn Downs is back. To me, it's just it's just not needed. And it, it's not about, you know, Jack Stevens and what sort of footballer he is. It's just a, a tactical decision that that we're making at the moment that I don't think is doing us any favours. Um, because it, it means that we really, we you know, yesterday in particular, we could only really attack down one side of the pitch. Very, very occasionally, Jack Stevens got forward on that left-hand side, and we had the sort of combinations that you expect. But it, it to, to me, it just, it just causes more problems than it solves. And uh, I, I just hope that we go back to to trust him. What served us so well, you know, the four-three-three formation with Flynn Downs in in the midfield on his own. Okay, he, he might not have had the best of games yesterday. But he's such a good player. He totally knows how to play, totally knows where to be to receive the ball. And I just think we've got to get back to that as soon as possible. And certainly by the time the uh, the games start getting important again and um, towards the end of the season. Do you think Ryan Manning can feel a bit aggrieved, Steve? I mean, I didn't watch much of the championship football last season, but I mean, he was in the team of the year, wasn't he? At the end of the year, you know, best left back in the league and quite a creative left back as well, obviously playing under Russell Martin. I think he had a a couple of options for places to go. We sign him and then he just finds himself out of favour at the moment. And and that is as a result of of Jack Stevens coming in and and the, the, the things that Glenn has just highlighted. Uh, yes, I mean one. I mean one thing that I find interesting is how much Russell Martin very clearly listens to outside noise. Um, because let's be let's be let's be blunt about this. Ryan Manning has had an absolute torrent of abuse from certain sections of the of the fan base since week one this season. With um, with or without justification, you know, is, is that? Um, I mean, some. I mean. Yeah, by by all means, criticise mistakes that are made, but some of it has been ridiculously over the top. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, we as we as a fan base always have to have a always have to have a scapegoat, mm. and there's always there's always one player that gets picked on, um, regardless of whether it's justified. Um, certain players get away with um, putting in two out of ten performances here um, every so often because they're because they're a fan favourite, and it's. Yeah, I mean, it's just the, just the way it goes, unfortunately. Um, but I do think that um, basically Manning is the is the easy fall guy from Martin's perspective um, to shoehorn Stevens in in that role because well, it, it gets it it gets sort of fans off his back for uh, for picking a player that that a significant percentage of the fan base don't think is good enough, um, and it allows him to to play. Play Stevens and have his his sort of uh, fearless leader in um, in the in the team, even though he's not um, he's not able to play in in what Stevens would obviously um, deem his his own best position. Um, but yeah, I, I think yeah, Manning Manning should feel um, feel a bit of grief because at the end of the day, he is the only senior left back at, the, at this football club at the moment. Um, Juan Larios is still kind of a, a hologram of, of something that may resemble a player at some point when he when he when he uh, may may or may not be fit again um but until such times he is he is the left the left back that we've got um as you say he was in team of the year last year he's mm, he's yeah. got good he's got good numbers at this level um and has and has proven he can play the system now, obviously, we know that Swansea conceded a boatload of goals last season. Okay, yeah, fine. They also they also scored scored a boatload of goals, um, and that's kind of what's been 
mirrored with us to um to a to an extent i mean we've scored slightly more goals and we've conceded slightly fewer um but yeah i mean the the way the style of football is is quite open and but manning knows how to play that way um, yeah, he's, that, been drilled, the, he's been drilled on it for for three years now so yeah that's the key point he you know when manning plays he does do that thing where he turns up in the center of midfield and he plays very narrow and that so we're getting Jack Stevens to do that. Manning does that anyway, most of the time. But also, Manning offers the the traditional left back stuff. Yeah, uh, the, o- the overlap, the, the crossing. Yeah, which is I f- I feel is is what we're missing. Mm. You know, being able to take a throw in as well, which um, which also helps. <laughs> and I guess, Glenn, with um with the, the the whatever happens, you know, the next couple of league games, we're going to end up in the playoffs. There will be three games from the Premier League, regardless, and it's going to be about mm. that momentum and and playing your best players and you don't want all that noise around are we still messing around and, and trying to fit somebody in you, you want your best 11 going into those those three big games what worries me more than that is this squad over the last i know it's different you know different players but a lot of them are the same over the last three or four years whenever they've had the chance to actually achieve something be it break into the top of the league when ralph was here uh, you know, top half of the league or to get out of the relegation zone at, at times last year. Every time we've had the opportunity to do something worthwhile, we've blown it. And I, I, it does worry me that there is still a a, a certain softness around the, you know, the, the group of players that we've got. Um, so when the, when the pressure is on, like it was against Ipswich, we, we throw in, yeah, we find a way to lose the game. We find a way to not achieve what we set out to achieve, sort of thing, and uh, that worries me more about the playoff game rather than mm. any sort of like individual um, team selections. Um, I I just think we, you know, if we're going to talk about the, the selections, if we if we persist with this, I, I just think we're going to make it harder for ourselves. Um, you know, I I think I said a couple of weeks ago. It to me, it's 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 a tactic that. If you're Manchester City with Manchester City players, then you can do it. And we're the pound shop version. And Russell Martin's the pound shop Pep Guardiola, whether he chooses to admit it, with much better hair, obviously. But um, yeah, I just don't, um, I, I don't like it. I, I just prefer things to be, uh, you know, balanced. I like I like a balanced team, a right, a right footed right back, a left footed left back. And um, yeah, who knows? Let's see where that can take us. And a proper centre forward. Even if he's not the best player in the world, have someone who's used to playing there, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's get away from shoehorning players in and finding a formation that that fits around that. It just no, not for me. The other player that was missing yesterday, Steve, was was Stu Armstrong, and and we kind of we missed his creativity in those those forward runs a bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, Rothwell from in games from the start just doesn't seem to have. Um, I mean, he's. I mean, whether I don't know whether there's correlation or causation here. Like the two don't necessarily overlap, but the games he started have generally been games where we've not played very well. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, it, um, and yet his contributions off the bench are generally a lot more positive. Um, yeah. He's obviously scored four goals off the bench, but also mm. when he's come on and just been able to play, just been able to run. Um, through midfield in sort of slightly more open space, um, he's been a lot more been a lot more effective for us. Whereas yesterday, as Glenn mentioned earlier, when Blackburn had Blackburn forced into the sub, they basically brought another central midfielder on and just clogged up the space, and he had nowhere to go. Um, so yeah, it was difficult, and we were relying on uh, Joe Rebo to be the only guy linking midfield and attack, and. That's kind of fine. He's good enough, but um, he's only one player and he needs a little bit of support. And unfortunately, he didn't have an awful lot of it from from either flank, really. Um, mm. I mean, as Glenn mentioned earlier, Ryan Fraser was was left a bit isolated. Um, David Brooks was was involved early and should have had an assist for for Armstrong early on. But after that, he kind of disappeared from the game, really. He didn't, yeah. didn't get involved at all. Mm. Um so yeah, it's it's a problem, but it's it's one where you you can't just rely on having one player available to make to make a huge difference. And unfortunately, we now seem to have 
probably three of three, maybe four of those players now. I mean, mm. if you think um, Carl Walker Peters, Flynn Downs, Stu Armstrong, and Che Adams, in order to have a proper structure in our team, it's, yep. that's that's not great that we that, that we're now we now seem to be in in that position. When when I mean three four months ago, we thought okay, we've we've got we've got a bit of depth, we're okay, we can absorb this sort of mini injury crisis, and we were still still unbeaten through it in January February. Um, so yeah, it's yeah slightly slightly concerning coming into um, coming into the business end of the season. Yeah, with so much at stake as well. Uh, Glenn, quick bit on the uh, the subs yesterday. Uh, we've we've been talking in recent weeks about whether they had an impact or or not. There were yeah a couple of signs like Sinemana seems all right yesterday when he came on. Maybe um, a dozy what, what's that? What's that? Uh, that meme that Catuzo's in? You know, sometimes pretty good, sometimes pretty whatever. Yeah, some of them were some of them were all right. I thought Edozi and Suleimana did okay when they came on. Um, not Suleimana's biggest fan, as everyone knows, but he um, he made a difference. I thought when he came on, he was it was a lot more direct than uh, certainly than David Brooks was. And um, yeah, he was unfortunate because Edozi put that pass through to him in the second half, and the, he got there at the same time as the goalkeeper. But you could see what he was trying to do, and he, he provided a threat that wouldn't have been there um, because of his pace. So. Adams had to come on. That was simple, but I, I thought, you know, I, it's, Will Smallbone is not a good impact sub because no. he, he doesn't add. You know, you're looking for a, your your midfield or your your substitutes to add energy. He's not going to do that. He's not that sort of player. Mm. Um, so I, I don't like it when he comes on as a sub. Um, he, he never seems to impact the game in a positive way. And and Sekimara was a waste of time again. Um, as he always is, gave away a couple of free kicks. I think we only gave we didn't give away many free kicks all game. He was about fifty percent of them when he came on. So he, you know, just added nothing. And I, again, I, I repeat that I would I would rather have Sulemana as a sub playing centre forward than um, than have Sekumara on there. I'd rather have one of the kids on the bench, a Tyler Diblin or a Sam Amo. Yeah, it, it's just you know when you when you're bringing him on as the fifth sub to to make a difference, you do begin to think you know <laughs> we've given up here <laughs> so, but there you go that's i mean that's harsh based on based on just that but i see it too often with him he just comes he just comes on and instead of making the most of the minutes he's given he just he just does nothing and uh he's not exactly sticking his hand up for a regular place in the team and no uh, you're you're right and there are so many younger players that that potentially could come in and grab that opportunity that's the thing isn't it that that hunger that seems to be missing a bit at the moment but. yeah yeah, maybe, but uh, but no, I thought that you know the subs the subs are a mixed bag. But I mean, I mean the wingers in particular and and Che Adams, they were kind of desperately needed because the structure hadn't been right from the start. So mm. you can't really hand out loads of credit to correct something which was obviously wrong from minute one. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But mm. uh, I thought the one the one selection that did work, I thought was Joe Arrivo. Um, playing in midfield, I thought he was really good, and I thought he was good against Ipswich as well. And that's a little clue to my t- um, player well, of the week. <laughs> that, that, that brings us rather nicely on to our TSP player of the week. We didn't do it after oh, the Ipswich game on Monday, <laughs> so um, let's let's do that now. Um, Glenn, let's come to you first. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go with Joe Rebo because he's he's coming to the side. He's played two games in a row, which I don't think he might not have done this season. He might be wrong on that, but he's a player that. I think there's a lot more to come from him, uh, in, uh, you know, in this league that we're in now, and the, the way he's kind of turned perceptions around, including mine. I I kind of think there's a lot more to come from this guy. So I I would like to see him get given a run of games. The, the question I have against him is fitness, hmm. um, but he hasn't really had a run of games since certainly this season, and he was just sort of getting a run of games, I think, when he went to the Afcon. So. I would I would like to see him keep that keep that place in the team and um and see how much he can um how much he can improve over the next few games but I thought the his performance against Ipswich and his performance um against Blackburn I thought were as good as anything else that we we had out on the pitch so uh, yeah I'll go for him any standouts for you, Steve? I'm, I guess it's going to be from Monday rather than uh, fr- from yesterday. I, I cast my mind back to Monday. I remember, like Jack Stevens, we thought had a good game, didn't he at, at Ipswich? Yeah, Stevens was very good at Ipswich. I thought, um, 
because of i mean as as i mentioned earlier the the kind of experimental position of having him as a i mean theoretically lining up as a left back but never really ever playing there apart from when the opposition have got the ball out that um on that flank has worked really well against good against the better opposition that we've played so it worked it worked really well against Ipswich it worked really well at West Brom um but it's just against the kind of bog standard midley teams where we get a little bit clogged down and it didn't it just doesn't quite um doesn't take doesn't it yeah as, as glenn said there are more there are more downsides to upsides with it um mm. for me um but yeah he was he was good on on uh, monday but i think Stu armstrong would be my uh, my nomination because i mean let's be honest we as you as you mentioned we noticed that he wasn't there yeah. uh yesterday that was a that was a hole to fill and and we didn't fill it suitably Okay, let's go with Joe Aribo, Jack Stevens, and Stu Armstrong for the player of the week vote then. Now, Coventry kept themselves in the hunt for a playoff place with victory over Leeds at the weekend. We didn't see that one coming. Uh, they visit St Mary's, of course, on Tuesday evening. Glenn, it was a one all back in December. I think Sam Adozi rescuing the point from memory. That was mm. kind of like halfway through the, the unbeaten run. Um, this is going to be a really tough game on Tuesday night because... They're suddenly back in it, aren't they? And it's going to be, it looks like Coventry or Norwich for that that last yeah. playoff place. And, and they're going to be up for this one. We could be in trouble. Well, I mean, to be honest, forgetting the fact that we're likely to be in the playoffs, um, if I was watching this as a neutral, I'd be wanting Coventry to get in there um, as opposed to Norwich. Mm. Um, but Because I think Norwich are a dreadful football team. But, they, you know, they seem to have strung together a few results and are currently in sixth place. But uh, no, I like... Um, I like Mark Robbins. There's nothing to dislike about him and the way he goes about things. The fact he's been a, a manager at the same team for six years, I think, is, is obviously something unheard of, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about Watford in a minute, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. I probably had about 20 managers in that time. But uh, but no, I thought, I mean, I didn't think Coventry were that great against us. Um, but we we had a we picked a slightly funny team in that one. We picked Joe Rebo as a, as a winger. Mm. And we didn't really have any sort of pace in the team. And it was a, a, a suitably sort of stodgy kind of performance until we went behind. Uh, it was a bad, bad goal we conceded um, to uh, Hadji Wright, where, I don't know if you remember it, it was where we lost the ball in midfield and we should have done the old tactical foul, pulled him down, but no one did. And he was it was allowed to run through and he teed up Hadji Wright, who scored. So after that, we woke up and Sam had those equalised. So it was it was one of those games during the run that ultimately, Steve was talking about this last week, it's, it was a draw where we basically dropped two points, a game that we should have won. Mm. Um, if we'd have played anywhere near our, our best level, we would have won that. And so, but, it, you know, it's changed. It's changed now. Coventry are coming into this, into this game in decent form. I think they've won four out of the last five. Uh, beat Leeds, um, champions elect few days ago so uh it's um yeah it, it's going to be a difficult one and, and they certainly having just beaten Leeds they're um they're not going to come into this game with any um any fear so if if we play like we did at Blackburn then it could be a, a bit of a nasty game I think but uh, I think they play Ipswich their last game of the season as well so they could have a say in, in how things work out at the top too which uh yeah which and they're also in the FA Cup still aren't they yeah, well, I was going right. to say, you know, well, they have yeah. one eye on the FA Cup because they that's the that's on Saturday, so they play Manchester United, and I just wonder, it must be a bit of a, a conundrum for them because that's a huge game, but at the same time, the playoffs has got to be the ultimate aim for them, isn't it? So um, I guess it's it's wishful thinking, Steve. They might have one eye on that FA Cup semi final with with Man United. Well, I mean, the the one eye will be looking at, looking at the way that Man United play today against Liverpool and thinking, well, I can put my reserve team out and we'll win that. Um, I mean that was an extraordinary performance. They, I mean, how they how they got a draw out of that? Uh, <laughs> no idea. That was just an insane game of football. Um, but yeah, Co Coventry have been really impressive the last two months, really. Basically, ever since they beat Leicester in that that Saturday lunchtime game, hmm. um, they came from behind and, and beaten three one. They beat them really well. Um, I mean, Leicester had a man sent off in the first half, but they, yeah, I mean, they just didn't give them a sniff. And at that point, everyone thought, well, that's fine. Leicester are still 12 points clear or whatever it was that they were. Um, no problems there. And now all of a sudden, they're um, they're they're kind of catchable. But 
yeah, but, I mean, Coventry's issues basically have been injury related. I mean, same same as a lot of sides. You, you got relatively small squads, so if you've got um, key players out injured for any period of time, then you generally struggle to replace them. And uh, their kind of key creative player, um, Callum O'Hare, missed big chunks of um, of the first half of the season. Um, but now he's fit and fit and available and firing. All of a sudden, they've actually got someone who can create stuff for um, Ellis Sims and Hadji Wright, who were both um, like first half of the season, both were getting chances, but but largely missing them. Now, all of a sudden, the confidence is up. They're they're finding the back of the net more often than not. So, yeah, that's I mean, it's a it's a huge game Tuesday in terms of um, okay, we're this is, this is an opposition that we're actually going to have to have a um, defensive plan for. Whereas I think, mm. I mean, you go into a game like Saturdays at Blackburn and you think, well, it's Sam Gallagher. Mm. Okay. Um, and I mean, just going back to um, yesterday, by the way, the um, the sponsors game gave Sam Gallagher man the match. Um, <laughs> it's like genuinely what? Um, absolutely no idea what for. Um, he had about three touches all, all afternoon. Um, but yeah, so Covent, Coventry have got excellent attackers in form, and they're going to they're going to cause us problems. Mm. Um, I actually think that Tuesday's game is one for the Stevens at left at, at sort of nominal left back. Well, I was going to um, say, is it this is the sort of game where that yeah. might work? Not Blackburn yeah, away, be, yeah, because of the two strikers. Mm. If you play with effectively three centre backs, then you um, you then obviously negate the fact that they've got two of them and you can pass it pass around them um so that's i think that will be that'll be the theory going into tuesday and then hopefully we can um look at getting back to a um to a proper formation against um against watford on saturday who will theoretically pose much much lesser um threats yeah, but the way we've called these things, Glenn, that probably means that Ryan Manning comes back in. But um, one of the notes, I think, from the, the match report when we played them last time was Adam Armstrong lifting three good chances over the bar. So um, you would oh, think yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, if we if we <laughs> stick with the same, with Jack Stevens um, slotting in as that sort of nominal left back, the, the changes are going to come up front, really, aren't they? You'd expect Che Adams to come back in for this one. Uh, oh, God, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, you know, it just, whatever you think of Che Adams as a, as a player, it, it just is the best of what we got at playing that number nine role. So mm. to me, he has to play and he has to stay on the pitch as well. Don't take, don't take him off yeah. because then it, it, it all seems to, to go a bit wrong, but uh, it's probably too much to hope for. I mean, funnily enough, one of the things I remember about the last Coventry game is that they had a, a, a right winger, uh, Sakamoto, I think his name is, who did cause us a lot of problems down that side. And obviously it was Ryan Manning playing that day. So, uh, but he's, out, he, he's out. I think. Yeah, he was. He wasn't in the squad um, in their game against Leeds. So, uh, so Hadji Wright played down the right hand side. So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what we uh, what we do. But the and the big difference for Coventry is Ellis Sims is now scoring goals, whereas he wasn't in the first half of the season. So it's going to be a it's going to be one to watch from a defensive point of view. But in answer to your question, yes, attacking wise, you would you would think that Shay Adams will start. Adam Armstrong will obviously start as well. And then it's um, it's any one really out of Brooks, Fraser, Sulemana, Idozi. Um, I personally, I'd like to see Idozi start mm. on on the left, but uh, I've got a feeling he'll be fourth choice. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it's Sulemana actually in this in this in this particular game. But uh, but yeah, we'll have to have to wait and see on that one. I, I think. Um, I mean, Stuart Armstrong will come back. Hopefully, Joe Rebo will stay in the team. Other than that, you know, you know what it's going to be with um, mm. with Stevens probably playing at left back. Depends how Sudamana does in training this week. Yeah, maybe. How many, how many world easy scores? Uh, let's try and do some score predictions. I'm not too too confident about this. I mean, I don't. We're not going to keep another clean sheet. I don't think. I can see us losing maybe two one. I think it's going to be quite a narrow one. Um, Steve, score prediction for you, please, for Tuesday night. Yeah, I mean, just just what the fan base fan base needs to uh, get get sort of behind the team again, isn't it? A, a, a game against a side who's um, sort of firing on all cylinders. But mm. yeah, I mean, you'd like you'd like to think that that there's something in there where the players just just say, right, no, we're gonna we're gonna turn up for this. Yeah, and it's gonna be 
the the tempo is going to be going to be faster and, and maybe the the attacking changes actually dictate those um that sort of change in tempo because i mean let's let's also not not kind of go too over too overboard with it because it was only a week ago that we were saying well for 60 65 minutes we absolutely yeah. battered ipswich it was brilliant yeah. and we were superb in that game so how about we just get back to that that'd be nice um i think um to be honest, a draw probably probably actually suits both sides almost in a way. Um, I mean, I'd obviously love us to win it, but they're in they're in good form. We're, we're slightly patchy, shall we say? Um, and yeah, we're not going to keep a clean sheet in this one. Uh, one all. Okay, I did read somewhere if we draw all of our remaining fixtures, then Coventry can't catch us. So you are right. Um, a draw is is fine for us. Um, less so for them. Glenn, score prediction for for Tuesday. Um, yeah, everything Steve just said, basically, uh, and I, I'm, I'll go, I'll go two all, just just to be different. But um, I actually think one all. But as we all know, it doesn't matter what I think with regards to score predictions. Um, I'll, I'll go for two all. I, I can't see us clean getting a clean sheet, even though no. I did predict one. And at Blackburn, and you got it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody laughed at me. I just got our our two goals. I didn't get right, unfortunately. Um. So yeah, a two all draw for me. I I think it will be a tough game, and I I think that I think we will be better than we were against Blackburn. I think there'll be there'll have been a few um, angry words said about that yeah. performance. Um, it's interesting. Also, the, also the game the game should be more open, shouldn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because they need to win. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, yeah. Coventry's Coventry's FA Cup game that. That may have a bearing. I don't think they'll rest any players, but you know, I mean, I, I thought against Blackburn we had a few players who were putting in kind of eighty percent performances. You know, possibly to do with well, we're not getting automatic promotion now, and mm-hmm. there there may be a couple of those from Coventry, bearing in mind the you know the, the game they've got coming up against Man United. So, uh, so hopefully that's hopefully that's a factor, but I I still think overall it'll end up as a two two draw. Okay, if you're watching live, don't forget to put your score predictions in the comments as well so we can see all those. On Saturday, it's our fourth game of the season against Watford. It's the well, the one all draw when we met in the league back in December. There was the FA Cup as well, the 3-0 win at St Mary's in the, the replay. So we got there in the end. Um, Steve, it's another one of those where Watford have got nothing to play for. Um, we haven't lost to them yet this season. Do you see that changing? Uh, good use of the word yet. Well played. <laughs> um, it shouldn't do. Um, I mean, everything I've seen seen from Watford this season, there they are what you would expect of a real mid-table um, championship side. on On their day, they can give give any team a bloody nose. They they were decent against Leeds last week, I thought. Um, but against against most opposition, they're they're fairly limited, mm. um, and of course. Given that it's Watford, they are on to their third. Ma- Is it the third manager of the season? Possibly. I can't remember when Ishmael was was um, was appointed, whether he was last season or not. Um, it's so funny, isn't it? Like this is the fourth time we played them, and there's another and manager. We, it's yeah, an I mean, interim coach that they've the got right every, now. Same every time. Yeah, Tom Cleverley is in uh, interim charge, and I mean he was only playing for them, I think, last season, maybe. Yeah. Um, so but he's had zero impact when you look at their results because because nothing's really. Well, I mean, they, well, I mean they've stopped losing. Um, so that's a start. <laughs> they're drawing um, games now, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they're they're they're, po- they're at least posing a threat when, for a long sort of run of games, they they definitely weren't. Um, I mean, just looking down their results, they lost at home to Coventry, lost at Ma- I mean, they managed to lose at Millwall and lost at home to Huddersfield. Um, that's that's kind of the the point of no return, I think, for for a manager in this division. If you if you're losing those sort of games back to back. Um, so yeah, they're, they're kind of in a, in a holding pattern ahead of the summer. And I mean, God knows what the owners will do, hmm. um, in the summer there, but in terms of the, the current, the current crop they've got, I mean, they've got some good players. You, you've seen the the performances they put in, in both the games at Vicarage road and they, they had a bit of threat about them. Um, so we had to kind of weather a little bit of a storm in, in both of those games, but it's, it just seems to be. Kind of a collection of players who could turn up when the weather suits, um, but for the most part, are quite happy to 
hide behind kind of circumstances at the club and um and say well these these aren't these aren't great working conditions for us so we're we're not gonna not gonna put in the performances here and oh, that's fine we'll we'll just get another manager next week it's fine um so yeah i'm not expecting a huge amount from them um but yeah it's at the end of the day it's a game we've got to go out there and, and perform in and, and get get the job done because i mean we've played a lot of a lot of these sort of sides at various points of the season where you think they're kind of just trudging in mid mid table and not really offering anything and then oh look they've equalized in the 90th minute and taken a point from us yeah um yeah. 96 so, minutes or something wasn't it it was was it yeah i mean that, that was yeah that, yeah that, i mean they they then sold that guy to huddersfield in january um, which shows the, the sort of level that they thought he was at. Um, so yeah, that was that was annoying. Um, but yeah, it's um, another thing we got a got a guard against. We've got to just get get the job done and get it get mm. it done well. Um, get to get two goals up midway through the second half, and then you can um, sort of start relaxing a little bit but i'd still want us just to just to have one game where we can go at full pelt from start to finish maybe this is the one that gives us that opportunity well they play on wednesday night as well they've got ipswich on wednesday and obviously we play on tuesday so we've got a, a bit of extra time to recover uh glenn they're 14th they're nine points off the relegation places they're 16 points off the top six that as, as steve says yeah. there's, there's nothing for them there's no. for, for them to play for so this regardless of what happens on tuesday or how that went um this is a great opportunity just to get a bit of momentum back yeah we gotta turn up if we, if we turn up we'll have no problems whatsoever with with this particular Watford team mm. um, being where they are, and especially is that you know they, as you say they got the game against Ipswich on Wednesday, um, th- they haven't got a lot about them. A couple of good individual players. I've got our mate Wesley, of course. Um, I mean, the thing I remember most about Watford is that they're very heavy-handed. They've um, they've obviously got they got Wesley, who's uh, not shy of putting a tackle in. They got this uh, guy Ryan Porteous, who's an absolute animal. Mm. Um, if you if the referee doesn't do anything about that, then it's it's going to be a tough old game for the strikers. So, uh, but um, but you know we got to make sure that that's that's not a factor. We we should beat these easily enough. Um, I know they they rested a few in the in the cup game, but you, you saw what they were like in that. Once they went behind, it was just like well, they they just phoned it in. They just couldn't be bothered. So, I think it'll be a game where. The first goal is um, is vital. Um, we have to make sure that we get it, obviously, and uh, and then the game should be fairly comfortable after that. So uh, I'm not anticipating too many problems in, in that game. And yeah, echo what Steve said about the um, you know about the the need to try and kind of feel good about ourselves again, really. And um, and this is an ideal opportunity to do that in front of uh, what will be a fairly decent home crowd. So. Uh, so yeah, br- bring on that one. But uh, hopefully, we can make it uh, make it a double this week and get everyone positive again. The atmosphere is going to play a, a key role as well this week, Steve. With these two big home games, you know they've got to get at Coventry and Watford right from the start because the 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 the, the crowd have got to get behind them if um, if they're going to get them over the line. Yeah, they do. And midweek games have been a weird one for us this season. In we don't want a light been... show, do we, on Tuesday? God, um, but also, <laughs> but, but the the general atmosphere in games for for evening games has been strangely subdued at times. It's been and it and it's odd because it always used to be that thing of oh uh, midweek night sort of night game under the lights, hmm. sort of tight atmosphere. And even like even since we've been at St Mary's, evening games have generally been decent, apart from sort of once you get sort of later into a game, if if it's kind of done one way or the other, then it gets a little bit. A little bit calmer but yeah this this season the, the the midweek the midweek ones have been um sort of just just a little bit down on the atmosphere i think compared to the compared to the saturday afternoon games i can't really put my finger on why other than people not being able not having time to get get to the pub and have a skinful before kickoff but that can't that can't be the only can't be the only reason surely a bit, bit of a bit of a theory i mean it's a pet theory i don't know if this is um this, this this holds any water or not? But it it there seem there always seems to be sort of like more empty seats in the evening games. So mm. I'm just wondering if you know just the way, the way life is these days. I just yeah. wonder if you know that p- people find it more difficult to get to the evening games, especially travelling because the trains are awful. 
Yeah, and oh, I'll get, I'll, getting, I'll, getting home from getting back yeah. to London after midweek games is a, is a right pain now. Yeah, so anyone who's not actually in Southampton, I, I do, I do wonder if they just look at the evening games now and just think, you know, this is too much hassle. Yeah, and um, the chances of getting stranded somewhere are just are just not worth the uh, not worth the risk of coming down, and that the timing of the games makes it difficult to drive down and get down in time. I just, I just think sometimes the evening games that just do, does seem to be a bit of a bit of a subdued atmosphere because there you know there's there's a few more empty seats because people just don't go um mm. uh, and it's not reflected in the gate of course because it's a season ticket that's been sold so that gets counted yeah but there, mm. there always seems to be less people there and um uh, but that's just that's that's just one theory as to why the evening games might not quite have the atmosphere that um you're expecting them to have i think there's a lot in that um we're we're not doing a midweek pod as well, so that should help. I think, like statistically, when we've done a midweek pod and there's been a light show, it's been absolutely terrible. So we're doing our bit. That's you know, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, a big week ahead, a chance to get back to winning ways before the playoffs. So uh, the Watford game, we need to do some score predictions. I'm going to go for a two-all draw, just because I think you know we ought to win. So therefore, we probably won't. Um, Glenn, do you want to go first with this one? Yeah, I'll have. I'll have a nice, comfortable three 0 win. Oh, okay, Clean early sheet. goal, and then uh, yeah, early goal, and then um, and then a comfortable second half, much like the um, the FA Cup game was against them. I think we're uh, we'll be re- we'll be ready to put in a performance on sa- on uh, Saturday on Saturday. Yeah, Steve, score prediction for you. How do you see this one working out? Um, I'm going to go for a um, head a sort of score line that writes the they silence the critics. Um, and we're going to batter them 5 1. 5 1. Why not? Wow. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, bo- I'm bottom of the prediction league. I might as well go rogue. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to start gambling sooner rather than later. Uh, again, if you're watching live, do stick your, uh, your predictions for the Watford game in the comments section. Uh, don't forget, you can follow Total Saints Podcast on all the social media platforms. We are at Total Saints Pod. You can drop us a, a DM on any of the socials or you can email us via the website as well if there's something you need to share or just something you want to get off your chest this week. It's going to be a big week. And don't forget to check out the merch store as well. Loads of new lines being added there all the time. It's shop.totalsaints.co.uk. Uh, you'll also find us on Patreon. That's where you can support the podcast with a monthly contribution. It's patreon.com forward slash Total Saints Podcast. There are four tiers ranging from £5 to £20 per month. And each of the tiers comes with some different perks, including some shout outs for the patrons in our Francis Benali and our Mick Shannon tier. So as always, thank you to Dave Melton, Mark Atkins, Andy Hollis, Anthony Thompson, Saints in Exile, Gavin Ford, James Harron, Nikki Nicholson, Southampton NY, Drew Dyer, James Kibbe and Mike E. They're all in our Francis Benali tier. And also thanks to Colt Baker, Dave Ernstberger, Ed Busy, Nick Higston, Phil Cook, Nick Reed, Paul Stewart, Phil Horstrop, Matt Hall and Mark Littlewood, who are in our Mick Shannon. Tier. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for Glenn. As I say, there's no midweek pod this week, so we will see you next Sunday evening at seven for the live stream. Have a good week. Thank you for watching.